Hi everyone. Am I working okay? Can someone give me a thumbs up or something to make sure it's working? Got a couple of minutes yet. Hi everyone. Hi Sarah. Hi Patrick. Hi Kate. Can you all see me okay? Can you all hear me? Yeah, I think it's working. Hi everyone. Thanks for all the comments already. I'll just wait for one minute until two o'clock exactly and then I'll make a start. But I'm going to ask you a question for those of you that are here already, nice and keen and early. Does anybody know what this is here? Anyone guess what this is? Anyone know? Any guesses to what this strange artifact is here? Hi, Christine. Hi, Ash. Hi, everyone. Any guesses as to what this is? Yes, it's a tooth. Yeah, well done. Um, anyone know what species of animal this tooth has come from? Certainly not a human. Yeah, we've got a sperm whale tooth. Well done. Yes, this is a tooth from the, the sperm whale. So this creature here, I've got a little model here to show you. They have about 25 pairs of teeth just on their lower jaw. They actually don't have any teeth on their top jaw. They have big kind of holes in their gums, their tooth, teeth slot into. So really big and their teeth can kind of come in a variety of different sizes. Um, these are just two, the, this is the biggest one. It's about the same weight is probably, I don't know, a really heavy book, really heavy. Okay, it's two o'clock now, so we'll make a, a proper start. Hi everyone, so pleased it's working. And thanks to Lizzie for inviting us on today. My name is Anna, I'm the Head of Education for a whale and dolphin conservation charity called Orca, and Lizzie is a patron of Orca as well. I've been absolutely amazed by the variety of content and the huge amount of content that there is on these live lessons. I've learned so much already and I hope you've all been tuning into all of them. So thanks. Thanks so much, Lizzie, for inviting us on. So what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to do a, an introduction to who Orca are and who I am. Then we'll talk a bit more about whales, dolphins and porpoises. I've got some more artifacts to show you today. And then I'm going to talk a bit more about how you can get involved with Orca's work if you want to. So I'd love to get all your questions. So please do send those in and I will do my best to answer as many of those as possible at the end. OK, so um, as I said, I work for Orca. Orca are a whale and dolphin and porpoise conservation charity. We're based in Portsmouth on the south coast of England. And we use platforms of opportunity, namely ferries and cruise ships, to go out and collect vital data on the abundance and distribution of whales, dolphins and porpoises all around the world. We work on ferry routes all around the UK, and we also work on cruise ships all around the world. So we use those ships as our platforms of opportunity to go out and collect this data. So I've had some amazing experiences seeing whales and dolphins myself. I first started out as a volunteer for Orca before getting a job here six years ago. So my job, I'm the head of education. So I create all of our educational materials for schools. I visit a lot of schools myself. I also manage our wildlife officer programs as well. So our wildlife officers live and work on board ferries um, over the summer months and they inspire everyone about the amazing wildlife around them on their journey. Okay, so all of the data that we collect is actually used to inform policy. So to help create spaces like marine protected areas and marine conservation zones. And our data is also used by university students for projects as well. We even have a PhD project at the moment on um, investigating more into ship strike. Unfortunately, a lot of, especially large whales, do get hit by large ships. So we have a PhD student working on on learning more about how whales behave to large ships. And we also have a big education programme, as I've said already. Hopefully some of you have been tuning into our orca lessons to learn all there is to learn about whales and dolphins. So let's talk about cetaceans and let's get into the fun stuff. So cetaceans is the word that we use to describe all the whales, dolphins and porpoises. 
There's around about 90 different species of cetaceans all around the world. We say around about 90 because some species are being discovered. There was a species discovered last year um, in the Pacific called the black beaked whale. But unfortunately, also these species do become extinct as well. So that number does go down. And it was the Yangtze River dolphin in 2007, which was the last species to become extinct. You might have heard of the Vaquita porpoise. Um, it's a tiny animal, only 1.2 meters long, only lives in the Sea of Cortez in Mexico. And there's less than 10 individuals left in the wild. So they're very likely to unfortunately become extinct in the near future. So all cetaceans are marine mammals, so they breathe air, they have to come up to the surface, which is amazing because it means that we can see them. Um, they really forge the connection between us watching and, and the sea beneath them. They are warm blooded, they give birth to live young. The young are actually born a tail first, and that's so then the female can push it up to the surface to take its first breath. The young suckle milk from their mothers as well. The mothers spend a huge amount of energy bringing up their young too. Some whales will even take them on huge migrations even when they're only a few months old. So they really nurture their young. And also um, they, uh, their tails move up and down. So unlike fish tails that move side to side, their tails move up and down. That's because they have a backbone very similar to ours. Just like other mammals, they also do have hair in the form of some whiskers around their mouth. Some species will lose these within the first kind of couple of months of their life. But a good example of a whale that has hair for all of its life is the grey whale. And it'll even use its hair when it's kind of foraging across the sandy seabed to find bits of food. OK, so I brought some guests with me today. So the first guest I would like to introduce you to is my friend Harry the Harbour Porpoise. Now you're going to have to bear with me because I haven't really got much space. But this is a, a harbour porpoise here. <laughs> you see, it's quite big. If I stand it up on its tail, I'm not very tall, but it's nearly, nearly about the same, same height as me. So there's seven species of porpoise all around the world. The only species of porpoise we get in the UK and Europe is the harbour porpoise. And this is the smallest but most common type of cetacean that we see. So if you're ever walking along some coastal footpath or watching from a, from a ferry and you see something quite small rolling through the water, it's probably gonna be a harbour porpoise here, okay? They have a really tiny equilateral triangle shaped dorsal fin here. That's their key ID feature. So look for that a dorsal fin. They're quite shy. They don't really jump out of the water like dolphins do. They just kind of roll through, through the water. They almost look like they're on a little wheel going round and around. And they have quite a flat face, if you can see, see Harry here. So this is a harbour porpoise. I'm just gonna pop the porpoise down here. Another creature I'd like you to meet is my friend seaweed. And seaweed is a common dolphin. He's a bit bigger. This is the common dolphin here. You can see that, hopefully you can. So she's a bit taller than Harry. I'm gonna get my light out now. Um, and hopefully you can see she's got this lovely yellow patterning on her sides. Now common dolphins have like a figure of eight pattern on the side of their body, yellow at the front, gray at the back. And that's how you can identify them quite easily in the field. I really love the common dolphins because not only are they very acrobatic and energetic, but they're also quite easy to identify as well. So here you can see the common dolphin. And unlike Harry the porpoise, she has quite a long mouth and a long, long beak there. And that's filled with loads and loads of teeth for catching prey one by one and then swallowing it whole. OK. Yes, I love I love common dolphins too, Rach. <laughs> They're one of my favourites to see. Right. I'm just going to pop seaweed down over here. And I've got one more friend that I want you to meet. And this one's even bigger. <laughs> And I don't think I'm going to be able to lift it up, actually. It's only one of me. So this is Barry. Barry is a bottlenose dolphin. And he's an incredible four metres long. So he's absolutely huge. Um, bottlenose dolphins live in most oceans around the world. But around the UK, we get the largest species of bottlenose dolphins. So four metres long. So maybe later, a good activity for you to do is measure how tall you are and then see how many of you before 
bottlenose dolphins, but it's certainly a lot bigger than me. In fact, I'm going to leave Barry down here because I can't even lift him over. Okay, so that's some dolphins and porpoises. So introduce you to three different species there. Does anyone know the difference between a dolphin and a porpoise? So I've just kind of showed you about the size. So porpoises are a bit smaller. Anyone know? So the shape of their dorsal fin is a bit different as well. I mentioned that the porpoise had a really equilateral triangle shaped dorsal fin, but a dolphin's fin kind of points back towards their tail. But the main difference between a dolphin and a porpoise is actually the shape of their teeth. So this is a, um, a replica of a quite a small bottlenose dolphin skull. Here we go. See, they've got a long beak here. I'll just get this right. So they have nearly 100 teeth in their mouth. You can see they're really quite sharp and cone shaped. And they use these teeth for catching large prey one by one and then swallowing it whole. And that's basically to save time. Because if the dolphin has herded up a group of fish and it has to catch a fish, sit there chewing the food and then swallow it, the rest of the group of fish will have swum away. So if they can quickly eat one fish with its teeth, swallow it whole, then it can quickly catch another fish and swallow it whole as well. So this is the bottlenose dolphin skull. While we're looking at this skull, its eyes would go on the side of its head. The, the backbone would connect into the back here with their huge brains inside. They're very, very intelligent, very clever animals. And on the top here, we can see their nostrils. So they are um, just like our nostrils, but on top of their head. And that's so they can breathe really easily. Remember, they're marine mammals. So they have to come up to the surface um, to breathe air. So that's why it's there to make it nice and easy for them to breathe. Okay, whereas, oh yeah, well done, Ash, got the right answer. <laughs> whereas porpoise teeth are a different shape. So the main difference between a dolphin and a porpoise is the shape of their teeth. This model's a bit battered around. It's been to lots and lots of schools, but can you just see the teeth are very flat. They're really, really flat. They're not sharp at all like the dolphin's teeth. They're quite small. People say they look like a, a zip or um, a spade. What do you think they look like? But apart from that, looks quite similar to the dolphin um, skull, except for just being a bit smaller. So it's quite a popular quiz question, actually. I once won a pub quiz on that question with what the difference is between uh, a dolphin and a porpoise. OK, does anyone know the difference between um, a dolphin and a whale? Some models here to help me with this one. So all dolphins have teeth. Uh, some whales have teeth, like the sperm whale. I was just showing everyone before two o'clock this huge sperm whale tooth here. Um, and this is our little model of the sperm whale here. Okay, this is the largest of the toothed whales, and it dives to about 2,000 meters deep to feed on really big squid species. But most whales, they don't have teeth. They have something called baleen. And yes, well done, Sarah. It's like a big brush. So... This here is um, a, a baleen plate from a fin whale. Can you see the bristly bits here? So the baleen is like a thick brush that hangs from their top jaw. It's made out of the same material as our hair and our fingernails. And it's a really thick brush hanging from the whale's mouth. And they use that to filter feed. So they'll engulf huge amounts of food and water. Then they'll use their tongue to squeeze the water out. And this baleen brush here acts like a sieve. So it traps all the bits of food, but allows the water to flow back out into the ocean. And then the whale can run its tongue along the baleen, collect all the food into a big ball, and then swallow loads of tiny prey in one go. So that's baleen here. So most whales have baleen, but let's also have a look at what they look like. So here we've got a killer whale or an orca. It's the largest species of dolphin. It's not a whale, as the name suggests. And it's a dolphin because it has teeth and it has a really large dorsal fin right in the middle of its body. Whereas if we have a look at the whale, this is a humpback whale model here. Can you see the dorsal fin is tiny and it's two thirds of the way along their back. It's not in the middle of their back like the killer whale is. These models are not to, to scale to size. Okay, can you see the difference in kind of their body shape? 
the way they feed and their dorsal fin as well. And whales generally are much, much larger. As I said, the largest dolphin is the killer whale. That's about 10 meters long. So about the same size as one double-decker bus. But whales are about that size or even bigger. The biggest whale is the blue whale, which is here. <laughs> and that can grow up to 33 meters long and weigh about 200 tons. So absolutely huge. Okay. So yes, well done everyone for getting the differences right. I can see your comments popping up. It's really nice to see. Well done. Okay, what other things do I have to show you? Gosh, the time is going so quickly. Does anyone want to have a guess what this is here? This is, and also I've got something else. This is from one species. And this, which might give you a clue as to what it is. It's from a different species. Can you see this? So these ones are real. The sperm whale teeth were real as well. It's the skulls were replicas. Anyone want to see what it was? Yeah, well done. Yes, it's a vertebrae. Yeah. So these three here are three central vertebrae from a bottlenose dolphin. So you can see how big they are. If you run your uh, thumb down your back, you might be able to feel some of your vertebrae. And they're huge. These ones are absolutely huge here. Just carefully put those down. <laughs> But this little tiny one here has been a bit weathered, but this was found on, on a beach on the Isle of Wight. And this is a little harbour porpoise vertebrae. It's really delicate looking, isn't it? Beautiful. So really, really like that. All right. I think that's uh, the end of my artefacts. Hope you enjoyed seeing those. They're always a hit when I take them into, into schools. Let's see what questions I've got so far. All, all chatting about orcas in Scotland. That's brilliant. Okay, so. If you want to learn more about whales and dolphins, please do check out Orca's lessons. These are lessons I've produced, 16 lessons now, all about whales and dolphins, about how they feed, how they dive so deep, some of the threats that they're facing, uh, how they adapt to the cold, how they adapt to being in the water. So all the information about that um, is on our website. So now I'm just gonna go on to talk about how you can get involved with Orca's work if you want to do so. If you're super keen about whales and dolphins and you want to get out to sea and survey them, then please do look at our one day marine mammal surveyor training courses. These are one day classroom based courses where you get all the skills to go out on our ferry surveys. And the ferry survey is absolutely amazing. It's the, one of the first things that I did with Orca. Um, you meet loads of amazing people and you get to go out on the ferries, which is exciting in itself. And if you're super lucky, you get to see lots of different whales and dolphins too. If you just want to go out and see whales and dolphins without even collecting any data, you might want to have a look at our sea safaris. Now, these run in the Bay of Biscay, so they sail from the south coast of England all the way down to, um, to Spain and back again. And we cross the Bay of Biscay, which is one of the best places in the world for whale and dolphin species diversity. You can see anything from blue whales, quite, quite rare. Killer whales are quite rare, but we always see dolphins, common dolphins. And that's because there's a lot of different variety of habitats as you sail across Biscay. So there's loads of different habitats, there's lots of different homes for different species there. Those are our sea safaris. Again, all the details is that on the um, Orca website. But I just wanted to talk to you a bit more about our cruise conservationist work. Now, Lizzie Daly is an ambassador of our cruise conservationist programme and actually will be helping us deliver our cruise conservationist training programme. So as I mentioned before, we use cruise ships as our platforms of opportunity to inspire people and to collect vital data as well. And our cruise conservationists are highly trained by us. They're passionate and enthusiastic uh, people who go out and do lectures on board cruise ships, activities to inspire all the passengers about their work. And we also spend loads of time out on deck showcasing these animals to all the guests on board. So I've had some incredible um, experiences out at sea myself. I've written down my top five cruise conservationist experiences. I thought you might want to listen to them. So um, number five is when I was sailing from Iceland back to the UK. And um, it was really, really foggy. And suddenly out of the fog appeared this huge pod of pilot whales and false killer whales together. It was amazing. False killer whales I'd never seen before. So I was very, very, very excited about that. Um, and at number four, 
when we, uh, this was last June, we were sailing out of a port off the north coast of Iceland, and there were just humpback whales everywhere, and we counted no less than 72 humpback whales in four hours. How amazing is that? It was just unreal. They were breaching out of the water, tail slapping, pectoral fin slapping. Kind of, they were waving at us. It was absolutely incredible for all the guests on board and for us as well. Um, and at number three in Iceland, can you tell Iceland is one of my favourite places to go? Um, we were sailing down the south coast of Iceland and there's an island called Surtsey, which is I think the newest island in the world because it's a it's a volcano and the island's only just been formed and there were killer whales carousel feeding next to this new island this volcano island it was amazing so what orcas who feed on fish do in this area is they'll herd up a group of herring into a really tight ball by circling and around and around and around them and then they do the powerful tail slaps to stun the fish to make them easier to eat so we watched this for about two hours and I got some amazing uh, pictures. I'll make sure I post some of them on the Orca Twitter later. I've even got a picture of two male killer whales both blowing out and they've created a little rainbow with their blow, which is just amazing. Oh, number two. Number two was amazing. So first time I'd ever been to the Pacific Ocean and we saw northern right whale dolphins. Have you seen those before? They haven't got a dorsal fin. So they just look like a black sausage <laughs> jumping out through the water. And they were in a mixed pod with Pacific white-sided dolphins. They just came over the horizon, made a complete beeline for the ship that we were on. And they were playing in the bow wave for ages. It was just amazing. They're such a weird sight to see. But at number one was also in the Pacific Ocean. And it's humpback whales again. Can you guess that they are my favourite species? <laughs> and um, yeah, we were sailing and it was kind of mid-afternoon. And we just suddenly saw hundreds and hundreds of um, humpback whale blows on the horizon we stopped the the ship and for over three hours we just had humpback whales everywhere until it got dark and we were stood out on the deck in the dark and you could still hear the whales going pshaw, 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 blowing oh it was absolutely um amazing i can't wait to get back out to sea again we can notice some familiar names up here hi elfin <laughs> we can't wait to get back out to sea of course when it's safe to do so um, so yeah, I think from that top five, you'll work out my favourite species are orcas and humpback whales. And I've just noticed the time. Um, all I want to say is I absolutely love my job. I love the charity Orca. And if you want to get involved, please do contact us and, and let us know. Thank you so much for listening. Let me just quickly scroll up to see what questions I have. Well done, all of you, for getting the questions right. Hi, everyone. Hi, Lindsay from Goldsby Primary School. Hi, everyone. Hope you've been enjoying the, the lessons. Well done for everyone getting them right about the baleen. I love orcas too. I have seen orcas a couple of times in Scotland. Um, one was from the North Link Ferry on a, on a survey and one was actually in Kirkwall Harbour. Well done everyone getting it right. I love that you're all chatting with each other. How many sperm whales have I seen? Um, not actually that many. I mean, I've been lucky enough to see some. The best experience I've actually had with sperm whales was um, in Kaikoura in New Zealand. And we went out on a little plane and we saw them from, from the sky. Um, it was a special birthday treat for me. And, uh, oh, it was amazing. You could see the whole body. And when they dived underneath, you could see them diving right down into the depths. Oh, it was absolutely um, incredible. Pink dolphins, yes, there are pink dolphins, the Amazon River dolphin. Um, there are white whales, as Elfin said, the beluga, people call it the white whale. There's no pink whales that we know of anyway. You never know. You never know what could be discovered. Brilliant. What's my favourite colour? My favourite colour is blue, blue for the sea. <laughs> there you go. Okay, everyone, anyone got any last questions? What's my favourite place to see whales? Um, that's a good question. I mean, Iceland, I think, is an incredible place to see them. I've seen a wide variety of different species. But around the UK, you can see about a third of the world's cetacean species. Our waters are really, really diverse. So yeah, around the UK, go and have a look on your, if you're lucky enough to live by the sea, go have a little look on your daily walk or get involved with some with some um, land watches when, when we can. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, your favourite colour is pink. Yeah, well, make sure you research the Amazon river dolphin. So 
just a quick um, promotion of, of our social media channels and our website. Please do check check those out. If you've got any other questions, make sure you um, go on our Twitter page or Instagram or Facebook, and I'll make sure I answer those ones later. Thank you, everyone, so much for watching. Oh, Nina, what's my favorite behavior? Oh, my favorite cetacean behavior is definitely breaching. Nothing breach a humpback whale breach. Nothing in the world. It's just the most amazing thing. It's over in a split second, but um, sort of the mind pictures of that are amazing. Have you ever been to Ireland? Um, I have been to Ireland, but a very, very long time ago. But I'd love to go um, to the south coast of Ireland around Cork because I understand that's an incredible area to see whales and dolphins. I think basically everywhere in the world is my is my favourite place to visit. I think anywhere you go, you can see whales and dolphins pretty much. Um, I'd love to go to Antarctica. <laughs> that's my ne next on my list. Thank you so much, everyone. I'll say goodbye now. But again, any questions, make sure you let us know on our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or email us. Our email address is on the website. Thanks, everyone. Have a lovely day.